Hi, I am excited to be joined by the dynamic duo behind Wallet Win. Welcome to the show, Amanda and Jonathan. Thank you for having Hello, us, Andy. Thank you. Absolutely. So talk to me about when you guys started Wallet Win and why did you start it? All right. Well, we got married in 2011 mm -hmm. and part of that deal, every right, everything that's yours becomes ours, but mine is ours. And that was, of course, also our debt. And I had we have a very lovely wedding gift to my wife of a whole bunch of debt and together, <laughs> though it was mostly mine, uh, we had $25,000 yep. of debt. We thought of all the dreams and all the plans and all this great stuff we had in store and then thought, oh, but we've got this this debt hanging over it all uh, as, a, as a dark cloud or as a ball and chain holding us back, whatever it was, however you want to think about it. And so we wanted to get rid of that before we could move on. We got creative, we sold things, went down to a car, all sorts of stuff and got out of debt. So we paid off the $25,000 in seven and a half months and just kind of just kept moving from there. And so when we did that, our take home pay from our, from our work together, both of us was $35,000. And so we were really creative and all the other people we worked with, they're like, wait, what did you do? How did you, what I want to, too. How do we do this? And so we started talking to people, we led like trainings for our organization, training other people like how to handle their money, how to budget, how to pay off debt, uh, had people a lot come of, over for dinner. Yeah, a lot of just one-on-one -on -one coaching with people at our dinner table. All this was completely free. And then one day in 2015, somebody wrote us a check afterwards and we tried to give it back. He was like, no, if I implement what you just taught me, I'm going to be a millionaire someday. So keep the 50 bucks. Uh -huh. And that's what got our wheels turning. And as our family started to grow and we started to welcome more children, we realized we didn't have time to do these dinner dinner consults anymore. We didn't have time to go speak at all the events. And mm -hmm. so it was time to take this show online and create something that we could do once that would help out so many. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's incredible because that's, that's what we're talking about today. So let's talk about the developing at once thing. So when did you guys say you you already developed Wallet Win? You, when did when did the course creation come to play? Was that right away, or was it the blog first? How did you guys decide what to do first? Yeah, well, we well, we we started on this idea of a money course that we wanted to make. We had a, a small blog, but it was very just personal stuff. You know, it wasn't money focused. Sure, we talked about money a decent bit because we were getting out of debt or whatever. Yeah, it was just family and friends. Yeah, yeah, nothing bigger than that. The smart thing to do would have been to build a money blog, get an audience, and then launch them build a product. Build an email list, all <laughs> those things. We didn't have any of that. We did it backwards. Yep, we did product and then try to build a list. <laughs> Oh, maybe we should have like a blog or a podcast or something. I think I think you're so, talking actually, to a collective of people who probably didn't all do it in the right order, including me. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> yeah, we are years into this and we still don't have a blog, Andy. Yeah, um, we, we, yep. we knew we wanted to do this um, and this was back in early 2017. Mm -hmm. We decided, okay, the first thing we want to do is maybe beta test this. So we mapped out our rough notes. We mm -hmm. recruited some guinea pigs to go through it. And I remember waking up at 3 a.m. Yep. to record our content. And it would roll out to everybody else just a couple hours later. They'd have one week to go through it and give us feedback. And, and we'd again. do it again the next week. So that was all taking place in the spring of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, still, we still had a day job at the time. So yep. we weren't too pre – like there was no – motivation to really get going with the course, but we knew it worked. We had a lot of testimonials from our beta version, which we probably in hindsight should have charged for. Absolutely should have charged for the beta. <laughs> Screwed that up too, but you know what? That's okay. You keep learning and you move forward. Yes. So fast forward to next uh, 2017. Yep. It was October. So here we are about a year later. We've been sitting on this beta thing We've been selling it a little bit here or there. Somebody asked, here, yeah, you can get beta access, whatever. No timetable for actually redoing the course, re record I mean, it was a it was a beta. Like it looked like it, it sounded like it, it worked like it. But people got results and people liked it. Fast forward, we're doing this. I have a day job. We're doing a couple of things like over. I'm working on a little bit here or there on my lunch break, whatever it is. And then on a Friday afternoon, my boss wants to have a talk. I've been trying to hunt, hunt him down all week to get some questions, some feedback on this project I was working on. I couldn't get him for nothing. And then he waltzes in 3 p.m. on Friday. Hey, do you have a minute? I thought, 
are you is this this really happens in the real life i thought it was just on tv but yes it ha- he came in hey um you know the at the board meeting the project you're working on and we're just we're gonna close it down mm-hmm. and so along with that of course is your position will be closed down too effective right now <laughs> i was like oh hey and you right, guys so were parents like, at this time is that right Yep, we had we two had kids. Just yes. <laughs> and in true Jonathan fashion, he actually put a mic on himself on his drive home. Yes, that's right. And gave this inspirational pep talk about how we were going to now start this business, and yeah, this was the it, best thing that ever happened to us. Because yeah. so this was if maybe this is more for podcast people, but this was right around when when startup was was really big. This with Alex um, Bloomberg was starting the podcast company Gimlet, which is now an unbelievable success. But he was recording himself starting the thing. So I thought, I'll record myself starting this thing just in <laughs> case I want to hear it later. So yeah, I mic'd myself on the way home. But I, I And then it was just like this talk of, all right, this like, wallet one has to make it now. Like We were looking for a time to launch the course. Well, right now is the time we're going to launch the course. And this is the chance that we have to give it a go and mm-hmm. see what happens. Three weeks later, you know, we had our emergency savings, uh, but we the goal was not to touch it. Mm-hmm. And so we hosted a free workshop where we led people through getting a budget off the ground, creating a plan to attack their debt, and then what kind of those next steps would be as they create financial freedom in their life. We tossed out a sales link and about 20 people enrolled in the course and we were off to the races and yeah. have never looked back. That's mm-hmm. incredible. What were you guys charging for the course at that time? The first go around, was... we charged $397. $397. And then talk to me about what, how did you guys develop the content? What did you decide saying, all right, this is the content that's going to move us forward? Was it based on the successes that you guys had in your life? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we had, um, I think the biggest influence we had in creating our course was Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy. She's great. She's so step by step. And that's exactly how my brain worked. And so anything Amy told me is what we did to kind of map this out. Mm -hmm. And the temptation is always to put too much in after, you know, coming up with that real first draft, we had to pare back a bunch because we didn't want to overwhelm people. And so it was all about just giving that right balance of what's going to get a result and is not just indulgently me pouring out information just because I know it. So we had to really hold ourselves back on that to make sure people got quick wins and kept moving through the course. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point that you brought up because sometimes, uh, I've at least known this personally, if you sign up for some courses and they are overwhelming and ask you to do too much, um, that's good that they're content rich, but if they're not able to be seen through, uh, then is it really a win, right? Right, mm-hmm. exactly. And we knew we wanted people completing it. We didn't want people just to consume one module and burn out. Right. Well, let's talk about the the development of it. Sounds like you guys developed the curriculum based on your situation and kind of mapped out, hey, here's how we've won. And you had those coaching opportunities to show people how you've won. So you just kind of put that in course form. How did you physically make it come to life? How did you design it? How did you develop it? That stuff sounds like uh, a mystery to me. So how, how did you guys do it? Oh, this was fun. Oh yeah, so we 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 you know we have our outline. Um, I'm sure we might have scripted some of it out, like word for word. And then the way we decided to do the presentation of it was um, essentially us speaking, doing voiceovers on top of keynotes, animations, slides. and slides. Yeah. Yeah, but that gave the opportunity. I got it was an opportunity to be creative in those slides. So we talk about uh, insurance. We talk about you know something had happened and then right there's a little house and then lightning hits it and the bushes catch on fire and the dog runs away and little stuff like that. We have some fun while we do it for sure. People enjoy it's it's thoroughly an experience in there. <laughs> <laughs> so but it sounds like you have that type of background. Is that right, Jonathan? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have uh, a background that yeah allows me to create and do things. So uh, yeah, graphic design, uh web design, video, all that stuff is something I'm I I'm good at. I will say, though, for people that are just starting, Mm -hmm. so Jonathan initially thought he was going to build this website custom. The whole, like the membership website where you would log in and see the course and all that stuff. And it was taking way, (sighs) way, way, way too long. And I just kept seeing time equals money going down the toilet. Not going to happen. I've got Kajabi right here. I can click and just get it. Uh, So Kajabi is is a, a platform that is created to house courses 
or memberships, that kind of thing. Right. And so it's very easy and streamlined and just works great of like, click here, upload your video. Do you have downloads? Click here, pick the PDF, hit publish. And they're kind of one of the big three, I'd say, Mm -hmm. Kajabi, Thinkific, Teachable. They're places to host your course and to make it look beautiful and professional and give people a pathway through the content. Mm -hmm. So yeah, after like three weeks of Jonathan trying to design his own, I just said, we're done. (laughs) I'm buying this and we're just going to move on. And if you ever come back to it, you do, but it's not right now. And Mm -hmm. we've never gone back to it. (laughs) It was always, and I think maybe other people can, can see this and maybe other parts of their life or other, other expressions, but it was always almost ready. And so, and that would be like, <laughs> oh, just, just, just two more hours or whatever. And just, and it nope. always was always moving target. And so we just finally, I wised up and decided to not let that get in the way of our, of our forward momentum and actually bringing this thing into the world and helping other people. That's great. What do they say? Perfect. It's the enemy of good or something like that, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yes. And because you, Jonathan is an artist and a graphic designer, that perfectionism can creep up. Um, and one other funny story of just the graphics. So our website looks beautiful. People always comment that they love the way our, our stuff looks. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan is behind basically all of it, except early on, we had disagreements about the branding because I wanted something more feminine. He wanted something more masculine. And when you're a married couple trying to run a business together, it can get really, really interesting. (laughs) Um, and so we did decide to outsource to a friend of ours, the branding. Um, Mm -hmm. and so that's what we did because it saved our marriage and kept us moving forward. So it was a solid business decision and marriage decision, huh? Exactly. Yeah. We got the the branding and then just moving forward. Now, yeah, now I do everything, every apply that to everything. Well, talk, talk to me about that moment when you were, when you lost your job and you said, I'm going to go full in on making this course awesome and we're going to sell it. How did you guys, I guess, survive financially at that point when you didn't have a lot of income coming in, knowing that you were loading up your time and energy into that course to be successful? How did you guys survive financially at that time? I mean, the place, right, where I, I, was, I lost a job. There was a couple of weeks, some severance that came through. And then we, yeah, we had our savings that we knew, you know, we could tap into if we needed to go through. And then it was... Uh, a fuel for the fire of getting the thing done. We, I mean, we got it out the door and, and going quickly. Yeah, less than a month after you lost your job. We still, I mean, it was before the last severance paycheck had even come. Mm-hmm. But as any course creator knows, a one launch does not mean you have a business. And so you got to do it again. And then you got to do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of, we discovered that you know, every few weeks we were having to kind of relaunch again, either through a launch or workshop or a webinar. And, um, you know, that became stressful and we realized we had to create more of a promotion plan and bring in some of those other aspects of creating a business, like building an audience, building an email list, um, diversifying our income, creating different offers. And as time went on, we kind of just built the plane as, as we, after we jumped off the cliff, Mm. thankfully we never hit rock bottom. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. So talk to me more about the promotion side of things. You mentioned a lot of things in there that people can do. What has been your best route for selling your course? Yeah, so I would say we've we've done probably a, almost anything a that things. you could try. Like, like we just cut our teeth on trying so many different things, but the best path for us has been joint venture partnerships. Um, Mm. So either a joint venture webinar with somebody, just kind of a one off with their audience um, where they can offer a unique bonus to their audience in addition to our course or having joint partners come in when we're doing a free workshop and they can promote the workshop and then offer their audience a bonus if they buy after the workshop's done. Mm. Those are by far hands down the best. The second would be our evergreen funnel. So we've gotten better at you know, building that audience and then nurturing them through our email list and then presenting them an opportunity to enroll in our course in an evergreen way. Yeah. And that usually goes through with a, with a webinar. So we've run our own webinars, you know, without someone else's audience, just either building that through our own audience that we've built up over some time or uh, ads and bringing people in onto the list to then promote the webinar. Got it. So you mentioned a periodic sales period. So do you guys do this this, I guess this sales blitz like quarterly or does it twice a year? How, how often do you, I guess, make a big deal about your course? <laughs> 
Well, in the first year when it was like (laughs) launch the course or stop eating, it was like every four weeks we were doing some new thing. And that was so stressful. Um, And so as we went into our second year of business, we decided to promote our course kind of live, if you will, in the fall, in that family new year. And then in the real new year, so August and January. And that makes sense for a lot of things where people are going to make a, a, a resolution around it. Mm-hmm. Those are the hot times. And then outside of that, we are offering it evergreen. But then we also have a membership now in addition to the course. So people who want more coaching and want to go deeper on the content um, as they master these personal finance concepts, we open that up um, a couple of times a year as well. But it's quieter. It's more on the back end of our email list. And then that's bringing us recurring revenue in addition to these spikes that we get when we open the course. Yeah. And then those partner webinars where we come in and speak with with that person to their list, those happen throughout the year, yeah. whatever fits those people's schedules. Got it. So you guys are doing uh, with the academy side of things. Is that one on one coaching then? It is not. It's group coaching. Um, so, you know, we'll do people can submit their budgets and we'll do a budget review. We'll do live Q&A's. We'll bring in guest experts. Um, but people in the academy do have an opportunity to grab one on one coaching for a discount. Got it. So it's like a, almost like a mastermind community and people can do personal finance uh, uh, practices together. Sounds like. Yeah, because in the course, I mean, all of us know that personal finance foundations, I mean, you could sit and talk about how money weaves its way into every topic, and that would take a year. The course boils down those foundations that you just got to know right now, and you you need to get that mindset. And then the academy is in all those nuances, like saving money on groceries or teaching your kids about money. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, updates to the course. You guys made it in 2017, sounds like. How often do you feel like the content needs to be updated? Does it need to be updated? Is it evergreen? How does that work? Yeah, well, we are actually uh, working on the first big update right now. It's been, yeah, it's been, what, three years or so since uh, since we've done it. And so, yeah, we've, we've certainly, I think, gotten better at presenting information, at boiling things down, at making things simple, at presenting them in a fun way. And so we're looking forward to this new format. You know, we've done a number of smaller, you know, workshops and promotion of either the course or the academy. And so we just learned things doing that. So this new version will probably incorporate more video, more animations, uh, just more ways to uh, get the information and the training into people in the way they're, they're most receptive to it. So that'll should be, yeah, we're in the midst of working on that right now. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. As you guys are developing something like that, an update like this, how do you control your costs that go into that? Is it all Jonathan graphic design labor and video guy, or is it like I'm outsourcing some help to make this happen? And, and what costs might you incur for some, for a course developer listening to this? Well, so in the early days, we outside of getting the branding done, which not everybody needs to do that. You, We could have, we essentially got it up for nearly free outside of the cost to our time. Yeah. Um, Cause we just, we learned and did everything ourselves. But as, as the budget has grown, we've reinvested into getting help on yeah. some of those tasks that we don't need to be messing around with. Yeah. And, so and some of it is in, in small steps, even in getting the help, but like we, instead of trying to memorize it or having papers taped up around the camera, <laughs> then we were able to invest, like we got an iPad and like a teleprompter thing and it would move the script for us. And now we have a neighbor kid come over and he runs the teleprompter, um, which is even better because we don't have to think about it. Or like in the first, in one of our first works, you can see I have the mouse in my hand and I'm like (laughs) scrolling the script. Uh, so that's like, that's not there anymore, which allows us to be more present on the camera because I don't have to think about, Oh, move it up, move it up, move it up. There's those small steps like that too. And so now that we're almost three years into this and redoing it probably fully for the first time, this time where there will be a videography team helping us film and edit. Mm -hmm. Now we will have creative control, but for some of those tasks that he pulled multiple all nighters to pull off in the early days, we don't do those anymore. Mm -hmm. But as the budget allowed, we made those investments. And I think that that's smart. That's how business owners stay in business in those early days is staying scrappy, keeping overhead small, and then making those strategic investments as they grow. 
That's incredible. Well, it sounds like you guys have been successful enough for this to be your full-time gig now. Talk to us about the revenue side of things. Has it been able to replace your your uh, previous income, Jonathan? I mean, where are you guys landing now? Yeah, yeah. Wallet Win is our, our full-time job here. Uh, we're able to, which is great because we're just able to then put our, our time and attention on it, on right in having the time to create and work on this new version of the course and not and not rush it out the door or make it have it take forever. Um, we also get to have that ability to have that that membership community and get in there and ask, answer questions and see how people are doing and all that. It's taken a while. It's gotten up there, but we're happy to be here. Yeah, since we started, just to give people you know concrete numbers to hold on to, I think we've generated almost $150,000 since we started three years ago. But <laughs> most of that is just in the last one year, not those first two years. So <laughs> anybody who thinks they're just going to stroll up with the perfect course idea and just knock it out of the park with a six-figure launch, like that's just, if you didn't have a ginormous audience coming to the table, that won't happen. But if you did have an awesome audience who just almost, you have a cult-like following on social media or whatever, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, you just need to create the offer, but for most of us, it's going to be this slow build and then you're going to see the winds start to get steam as time goes on. Yeah. I, I think that's incredible though. What you've described though, is a, a business model that doesn't require a lot of expenses, but has the potential even three years down the road to make you over six figures. So, I mean, kudos to you guys and keeping the expenses uh, small, using your talents like you have to Jonathan and, and pulling some all-nighters if you need to, uh, but but keeping the expenses small and then creating something that really helps people. Talk about the impact side of things. Who has gone through this course? Who have you helped? Do you guys have a story of somebody that you've helped that says, wow, this, this was really impactful for me? We have so many stories. Yeah. I mean, it's a matter of choosing that's the, which one. That's the best part. So, you know, we, we're toiling away at this thing or it's the, you know, these long days or whatever. You're kind of frustrated with this or that. And then a lot of times it's out of nowhere. We get some email or social media message or something about, you know, we just got out of debt and it's been this long or I've hit this milestone. And it's like, oh, oh, yeah, that's why we do this. That's why, you know, we stayed up late to do this or why we killed ourselves last week trying to film all that content in one day or whatever it is, because it's that person whose life is going to change, who now has peace or has a direction they know they're going to head in and is confident with themselves again. Like that's what really makes it work. Right. Yeah. Even just a few weeks ago, we had one of our earliest members of our course message the group and talk about how, you know, they're not facing any sort of financial strain during this coronavirus. They're debt free. They have an emergency fund. And so they're basically just, they're staying generous and giving a lot. They're, they're keeping their local economy afloat because they're, you know, or ordering takeout food and different things like that. They're able to help their neighbors. Um, and they wouldn't have been at position before they had taken our course. And so just stories like that are what we live for. Another, one of my favorite in our beta course years ago, you know, that beta that we should have charged for make note of that people charge for your beta. <laughs> um, there was a single mom of three who was just trapped in debt and she had been not paying on her loans for, for a while. They'd been in forbearance and now the total had actually been more than she'd ever even taken out in college to start. And it was just devastating to her and she thought she'd never, ever get out. Um, but within two years of taking our course, she became debt free and then was able to purchase her first home for her and her three kids. And we love that story. And we just are her biggest cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And on the down days, we have a folder where we read those stories and keep those because it keeps us going when there's a tech gremlin or somebody, uh, you know, some internet critic comes and wants to take you down. <laughs> like we got a, we, Oh man, this is the best. We did get an email, um, during one of our workshops that, you know, somebody was unsubscribing because of that idiot Jonathan, because he likes to have I was having some fun on camp <laughs> being a little goofy or whatever. He it likes to have it too much like, fun. It was so good. And that he preferred someone more serious. And that's yeah. fine. That's yeah. fine. In Go personal finance. There's, There's plenty of serious folks cool. in personal finance. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. 
Oh, man. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the people that are going to love you, and there's the people that are going to always have trouble with you. But you know what? You can't you can't be everything to everybody, right? Nope. Absolutely. Well, congratulations to both you guys. Not only do you have a, a profitable business with very, very low expenses, but you're also helping people. You're truly helping people on their journey to financial freedom. So congratulations on where you are. Where's the best place for people to check out your site and uh, maybe listen to your podcast? Yeah, just go to WalletWin.com. So you want to win with your money, WalletWin.com. Go to the podcast to search WalletWin, all one word, anywhere there's podcasts, or go to WalletWin.com slash podcast, and you can listen to it there or click any of the many buttons that will take you directly to it inside your favorite podcast program. Excellent. Thank you both so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. 